Now it's time to start getting this landscape material onto the landscape and start doing cool things with it. So if you're left off in the same sort of place that I did in the last step, you'll still have this material open, although it will be saved. But now what we want to do is just close it for the time being and move back to our level editor. So you'll see if you're in your materials folder that we have our new material and it doesn't look the same as the previous ones because it doesn't know which material to show you because it's obviously got four different ones to blend between. So you just get this weird kind of cloudy looking thing, but that's fine, we know what it is. So what we'll do before we can do anything, before we can start painting to it, is we need to assign this new material to the landscape. So what I'll do is just select my landscape and what I'll do is make sure I've also got my M underscore landscape new material selected in my materials folder. And then if I just click on this little arrow here, that will swap them over for me. And it should go completely black when it compiles the shaders. It has, that's good. That's what we wanted to see because at the moment, whilst we have assigned this material, we haven't told it which textures to use where because we've not done any painting. So that's what we'll do. That's what all this video is about really. So that's what, what we'll move on to now. So what we need to do first of all is change the tool set over. So back into the landscape tools over here. Come on, hurry up on real. there we go. And this time we're going over to paint because that's what we'll be doing. And you can see now that we've assigned that material, these four different textures are there waiting for us to paint with them. But if we were to try doing that now, it just wouldn't work because Unreal needs target layers to store this information as we paint. And we need to create one for each of those um, textures that we've got in there. So doing it's very, very easy. So for each one of the textures that you want to work with, you click on the little plus symbol here and you just click on weight blended layer and in brackets it says normal. That's how I remember it's the one to use because it's the one I would normally use. <laughs> good, good wordplay Shane. Okay, so give it a click and it'll ask you what you want to call it and where you want to put it. And I'm just going to go with the default name and the default location. You can see I've also got one there for chapter four because I've been working ahead to write this down. Uh, but at the moment we're going to do it there. So click on okay. And we need to do that for each one. So before we can move on, we need four of these. There we go. Easy peasy. What we need to do now is get a bit of color on there. And the way I always approach this is you could just start kind of painting by hand and putting things where you want. But I always like to put down like a base coat as if you're painting something else, you don't want to see that black color anywhere because that will make your, your terrain look rubbish. So we're going to put down a base coat of dirt and then paint on top of that to make sure that there's always something there. So to do that, all we need to do is right click anywhere on your dirt layer over here and you'll see that one of the options is to fill the layer with, with dirt. So if we click on that and wait a second, so the shader will need to compile, but when it's done, you'll get dirt everywhere. So there we go. The dirt is there. It was easy. So that is the first step in painting our terrain. What we need to do now is start actually using the brushes to add the other stuff, so the grass and the rock. Okay, so as with the actual sculpting tool to the landscape, when you're painting your textures, that's also an additive and subtractive workflow. So what I like to do, so we're gonna go with grass dry first of all. My tool strength's already set roughly where I want it. I'm probably gonna go for something like 0.2, I think. And my brush size, uh, I'm going to start it at 1024, but I may raise or decrease that depending on currently what I'm doing. So I want to set that up first of all. I do want a circular brush and I do want a smooth fall off. I want it to be nice and smooth so that it blends between other textures nicely. If I had a hard fall off, it would just create really definite edges, which is useful in some situations, but it's not what I want here. And then what I need to do is make sure that I can see a good chunk of my terrain like this that'll do it and what i'm going to do is just slowly i might just double the size of my brush i think for this first step 2048 that's better and i'm just going to start painting in some grass kind of in this central area we'll call it the plateau and you'll see that it starts to build up slowly because we've got the the brush strength on quite low the tool strength and what we want to do is allow that to build up as we continue to paint over. So I definitely want to get quite a lot of grass in the middle. Like that. 
And you've just got to be a bit patient and allow this to build up. You can have a stronger tool strength if you want. Um, but I'm always wary of overdoing it. So this is why I do it this way. And what you will notice as well is from time to time um, you'll lose some of the grid squares as it recompiles the shaders because there's more information there for it to work with. So it does work with it. So something like that. And then what I'll probably do is just come in a little bit closer. And in some areas, I'll just bring the size of my brush down. So I'm using my square brackets for this. And I'll just paint up into certain areas so the grass is growing up the hills, especially areas that are a little bit flatter. So over here, definitely want some cool grass going on. Yeah, there we go. A little bit going on up here. Where else do I want it? Oh, definitely up here, I think. I'll take that all the way up to the top. And up here. And just anywhere that you think it's going to look pretty natural for the grass to look like that. Okay, so let's just zoom out of that a little bit. I think that will do it for the first lot of grass. So what I want to do now is sort of in the central areas where there's more light and more water or whatever, we'll use some of the lush grass. So I'm just going to increase my brush size if it'll let me. There we go. And just, I don't want to overdo this and you'll see the shader needs to compile again because we've made it get a little bit more complicated by adding in a different type of grass and just want to blend in some of this lush grass in some areas and I might even just bring it in a little bit where we're going up the hill and quite a bit going on in the center like that so what I want to do at this stage is have a little look at how um, this grass is coming together. How does it look within my actual game? Not bad. So I think the sizing is a little bit off, which I will change later. But I can see that I've got grass in there and it blends between different ones in different areas. So that's good. Okay, so now what I need to do is get some rock in there. So... We'll change to the rock layer, get a reasonable sized brush and just some areas that we want to be a bit rockier, we're going to start to add that in. And again, it'll take a bit of shader compiling again to get this to catch up. And I don't want to overdo this because I do want this to blend with the dirt a little bit. I think that'll give a, a more interesting looking material. We just want this to look nice and cool. So it's going to be quite rocky as it gets hillier. Like so. So we're not really aiming for this to be perfect. It's going to be quite quick. You might spend more time painting your... Um, textures in than I'm going to do just in this video because I don't want it to take forever but we'll try and get a good amount of this in okay I'm fairly happy with that but what I want to do now oh, is just sort out the scaling of the, the texture because I'm not happy with the size I think it's tiling too much so like I did in the the previous material we changed the scale of it to just kind of sort it out so what i'm doing is just running over to somewhere where i can see kind of a few of the different textures over here looks like a good place um, and then what i'll do is i'll kind of change the size of it so there's a good one i think i can see the rock the rock's certainly tiling too much so what i'll do to sort that out is i'll just go back to my place mode so that my paint tools not in the way and i'm going to open up the materials folder open the landscape and then i'm going to change the scaling of it using the 
landscape coordinates node. And I've written down in my notes that I quite like the look of a mapping scale of three. So I'm going to type that in, press enter, save the material. Now the thing about not using parameters and the material instance on this, which we really should do, but I want to go a little bit quicker on this, is it will have to recompile, which takes us back to the, the checkerboard while that's happening. But once it comes in, it starts to look pretty nice. Okay, so one of the problems that we've got is that the rock texture still looks quite tiled. Um, and there are tricks that we could do to break that up within the material or we could blend another rock material in there But by the time we've completed this level you won't really notice it because there'll be trees up there There'll be rocks up there and that'll break it up for us So we won't spend too much time worrying about that, but what we will do Is just have a little run around See if we're liking the grass now. Yep, that looks pretty nice Yep, the rock looks okay over there in the background. We've got a nice blend of materials going on. I'm pretty happy Okay, so that brings us to the end of the landscape section. So we've created a landscape now. We've created a sexy material for it and we've painted that around. By all means, spend some more time being a little bit more kind of creative with this and placing different materials where you want. Um, in the next steps, moving forward, we're gonna start bringing things into this level. So different assets, grasses, trees, the little hut, all that sort of stuff. So I look forward to seeing you moving forward for that. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days, you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's gotta be worth a free trial though, right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.